Thank you. The theme of the day is lighting the way for the future. In the next 15 minutes, I hope to convince you that we can accomplish this by making universities the best for the world. Most of us seated here like to think we are modest, and we tend to keep a distance from people with inflated egos. However, in real life, we are not as modest as we like to think. Dozens of studies in psychology have consistently reported that many people consider themselves to be smarter than they are and even better looking than their peers. And some studies <laughs> and and some studies have con and some studies have suggested that this is more prevalent among men. Deep inside our hearts, we don't like to be associated with anything average. Institutions of higher learning do not like the average tag either. In fact, the easiest way to annoy our ever smiling chancellor is to call this great university an ordinary public campus. All over the world, great investments are being made to make and keep local institutions prestigious. Academic administrators are investing a lot of resources and spending sleepless nights developing strategies that will make their universities among the best in the world. Now, as universities become more prestigious, they are attracting more students and faculty than they can take in. More than ever before, these institutions are constantly dealing with large pools of very intelligent applicants, and their biggest headache is deciding who not to admit. Despite this overwhelming competition, many universities have been deliberate in developing policies that would ensure that their student and faculty profile is diversified. The big question is, why are universities doing this? Why are they investing and taking pride in diversity? Is it because diversity makes commencement ceremonies colorful? Of course not. Diversity has been embraced as a silver bullet that opens doors of opportunities for the other privileged, while at the same time creating an atmosphere of inclusiveness that nurtures collaboration. Universities that celebrate diversity are ambitious to groom a community of thinkers and innovators who would work together to eliminate the awful disparities haunting our local and global communities. To prepare this diverse body of students, universities have been investing heavily in academics and research. They have been keen to put these students under mentorship of professors who are academically proficient and research intensive, and we all know that these folks are not cheap to maintain. Overall, American universities have been on the lead in fusing academics with cutting edge research. Since the Second World War, the federal government has been funding up to 60% of university research with an expectation that alongside generating knowledge, these institutions would also train the next generation of scientists and leaders both in government and industry. This model is envied all over the world, and this is why I'm here, and it continues to pay great dividends. It has made American universities the best in the world, and the alma mater of some of the most accomplished innovators of all times, even if some of them actually never graduated. Until we get a new normal, hopefully from Africa, we know that Americans will keep taking the lion's share of Nobel Prizes. And this is awesome. However, despite all these great accomplishments, we all know that all is not Hollywood in America. Even with all the wealth and great innovations, especially in medicine, the United States continues to trail 
other developed countries in a lot of critical indicators ranging from infant mortality to life expectancy. Although these summary measures of population health reflect complex underlying problems, there is no doubt that the United States has what it takes to eliminate these awful disparities. There is no justification for this. So what is not happening? Where is the diverse community of innovators and leaders that we've been talking about? Are they making any difference? Of course, we know that they are. Many of these folks have dedicated their lives completely to eliminating disparities. But we also know that there are many others out there who are doing nothing about it and who are not getting involved in any way. In fact, some, including myself at some point, have doubted whether anything can be done to eliminate these disparities. This doesn't sound like me, but I must confess that after spending only two semesters in this great university, I was so immersed in the world of ideas to the extent that I had a single prescription for all disparities problem. If you work hard enough, there is no reason why you shouldn't be healthy and wealthy in America. This kind of mindset clouded my ability to appreciate the impact of dis uh, disparities in the lives of ordinary people who, who are affected by them on a daily basis. I remember when I went home during the summer of 2012, everything looked so imperfect, including our international airport that I used to be so proud of. I was seeing problems everywhere. It was clear. I was having a struggle connecting with real people and online people that I grew up with. And I was having a problem understanding the very struggles and problems that I was brought up struggling against. I felt strange. I was kind of disconnected with my own community. So trust me when I say that by the time many students graduate from the best colleges in the world, some of them are so disconnected from their own communities to the extent that they don't remember that they have an obligation to lighten the way for the future in their own communities, especially for the generation after them, including the future Obamas. What can the universities do to instill in their students an enduring commitment and desire to fight against dis disparities? Is there anything they can do? There are no simple answers to this, but one important step would be to shift focus from the narrow goal of becoming the best in the world to a more broader goal of becoming the best for the world. The competition to be the best in the world has made universities heavily infested in basic research with a huge trade-off for translational research. Now, basic research is cool. It's all about generating ideas and putting them out there. On the other hand, applied research, also called uh, translational research, is all about making that knowledge work for communities, converting the basic knowledge into practical solutions for communities. Therefore, although this great commitment to basic research continues to produce great leaders and innovators who are putting our universities on the global map and doing a lot of great things, the huge trade-off is denying these great innovators exposure to the communities and limiting their ability and motivation to tailor and harness their innovations to fight these disparities. Something needs to be done about it. Today, without meaningful immersion to translational research and community development, the best brains that we have in our universities are getting very little exposure, if any, to the awful disparities persisting in our local and global communities. In fact, by the time many of these students graduate, they can relate to Bill Gates, one big regret, leaving Harvard 
with no real awareness of the appalling disparities condemning millions of people to lives of despair. In this day and age, universities that aspire to be the best for the world cannot afford to let another student leave their gates with Bill Gates one big regret. Just as investing in basic research has produced great innovators and leaders, putting an equal investment in translational research is likely to co-opt the brilliant students in our universities in the fight against disparities. Institutions that accomplish this will be on their way into becoming the best for the world. Now, I could be biased, but the College of Nursing and Health Sciences is right ahead of the game in making UMass Boston the best for the world. I can talk about our dean, who is well known for her work with Arab American women in the communities. The chairperson of our department, Dr. DeMarco, is one of the luminaries in translational research. In fact, her award-winning work on HIV prevention among minorities who are in the low-income category is a classic example of how university can foster sustainable partnerships to eliminate disparities in, the, in their backyard. With this kind of exposure, it's no surprise that students in our college are very actively involved in the fight against disparities both here and ab abroad. At a personal level, my involvement with yet another College of Nursing initiative, the Roxbury and Kenya Heart and Soul Initiative, read by my amazing mentor, Dr. Stewart Shaw, is, has been a big blessing in making me connected with what is happening in reality. And of course, I needed this after just one year in this college. My involvement with this project has made me appreciate what is going on in the communities. It is kind of something that helps me to transition from the world of ideas that I'm constantly immersed in in this university to the realities of what happens in the communities. The constant exposure to the socioeconomic and cardiovascular health disparities here and in my homeland, Kenya, has been making my training here an amazing experience. In the classrooms, I get a lot of ideas and I've been taught about how to think, ask questions and look for evidence. My involvement in translational research and community development has made me appreciate the importance of perseverance and teamwork in making knowledge work for communities. I've not accomplished a lot, but the few things that I've accomplished here and those I will accomplish in future can be traced with my involvement with this great team. It is my hope that this great university will continue supporting such translational research initiatives that take students back to their communities so that they can learn how to make knowledge work for the community. It is my hope that universities will aspire not only to be the best in the world, but also to be even more importantly, the best for the world. Thank you.